You can't get that for 10 bucks in Hollywood Bowl. Ever. We wanted to create our own scene that had vibe, that had feel, that was a community. I went to Kiss or Kill and I was like, oh my god, we have to play with these bands. It was amazing to see this happening on a Tuesday night. No BS. Here we are, here's our songs, three chords and a cloud of dust. There was a counterculture feel that it had because it wasn't what you were seeing in Viper Room. Prior to Kiss or Kill, it was pretty bleak in Los Angeles. We do these dumb gigs at like the Whiskey where there's a $15 cover for like nine unknown bands. There's a better way to do it. Cheap cover, cheap drinks, and bands that everybody likes. Everybody knew each other, everybody was talking to each other. It was very rare that I'd ever seen that. They were a family. They seemed more like a family than just a scene. There was no pretentiousness. It was something real and honest going on. There have been several Kiss or Kill shows where I've started to cry because I just get overwhelmed with looking around and just I'm getting all choked up now. <laughs> I was completely blown away by what I saw. I immediately knew I was like, this is it. This is what we've been looking for. The thing that we noticed about Kiss or Kill was there was a lot of girl bands there. Cooper was such a strong force in starting that whole scene and promoting bands that had girls in them. It just really leveled the playing field. When I see that, when I see Celeste up there, when I see Cooper up there, when I see Kelly up there, it's so empowering. It wasn't just boy rock, you know. There were women involved, they were confident, they were strong, they were smiling, and they played rock and music, and it was just fun to be a part of that. It was starting to really, really take off. One night, Steve Jones was in there for Kiss or Kill. Him and a member of the New York Dolls and someone from Blondie were all there. As it grew from 30 people to 100 people to 300 people, all those bands were really excited because everyone felt like we really did this all together. All it needed was one band to get fucking major labels, something or other, and then the whole scene would just blow up like fucking Seattle 91. So what can we expect coming up from Kiss or Kill? <laughs> World domination. <laughs>
people that started that were all partiers. Joe Dana and Glenn and Chris Polis, Ian Dangerous. Dudes who just drink and you never know they're drunk. There is a lot of drinking that goes on. And that was impressive, actually. I have the only Midway beer helmet. Rock and roll scenes are so sexually driven and the debauchery that could potentially happen was a, definitely a draw for people. There is a handful of attractive women that are in bands at the Kisser Kills. People you're a fan of? Like a fan, like the bathroom's got a lock kind of fan. Are you asking me who have we fucked? People were hooking up, all kinds of things were going on. Girls, guys, girls, girls, guys, guys, whatever. You got the whole gamut, man. It's kiss or kill, it's fun. Drinking whiskey and making out. Fuck you, Matt, bro, but I hate you. You're a hot. Hey, Matt, why don't you fucking eat my clothes? Half the bands have broken up or moved away, and that sucks. The OOTs moved to New York. I just wanted to be a part of that scene, and since I left the band, I knew I wasn't going to be in the same way anymore. The Randys are just a shell of their former selves. Megan was the heart and soul of that band. I remember I went up to her and I was like this, because I was so pissed off at her. Emily's leaving Midway and everyone in that band's on vacation. Zeitgeist is gone. I fucking loved the auto parts. I was in the fucking coolest band ever. Polly ditched out of Bang Sugar Bang. I regret the way I left Bang Sugar Bang. I feel bad about it. And I knew when I was doing it that I was screwing them. It felt like our relationship that we'd had for five years together didn't mean anything to him. You know, I was just hurt, that's all. So. Maybe that's part of what family is. You, you know, it's all ugly and it's all really wonderful. It's like that up close and personal. You know what's going on. You're seeing the fights. You're seeing the makeups or the breakups. Christmas gift from our old drummer Polly and I decided for this interview I would shoot you with the darts if you get mouthy. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was so weak.